going to read the story, The Emperor's New Clothes. This is the original fairy tale by the by Hans Christian Andersen. And it's kind of funny. So if you listen closely and follow along, you may figure out what's happening. It's kind of a trick. Many, many years ago lived an emperor an emperor who thought so much of his new clothes that he spent all his money in order to obtain them. His only ambition was to always be well-dressed. He did not care for his soldiers, and the theater did not amuse him. The only thing, in fact, he thought anything of was to drive out and show a new suit of clothes. He had a coat for every hour of the day, and as one would say of a king, he is in his cabinet. So they would say of him, the emperor is in his dressing room like his closet. The great city where he resided was very happy. Every day, many strangers from all parts of the globe arrived. One day, two swindlers, so tricksters, came to the city. They made people believe that they were weavers and declared they could manufacture the finest cloth to be imagined. Their colors and patterns, they said, were not only exceptionally beautiful, but the clothes made of their material possessed the wonderful quality of being invisible to any man who was unfit for his office or unpardonably stupid. That must be a wonderful cloth, thought the emperor. If I were to be dressed in a suit made of this cloth, I should be able to find out which men in my empire were in unfit for their palaces, and I could distinguish the clever from the stupid. I must have this cloth woven for me without delay and he gave a large sum of money to the swindlers in advance. So he gave it to them before he saw what they made. That they should set to work without any loss of time. They set up two looms and pretended to be very hard at work, but they did nothing whatever on the looms. They asked for the finest silk and the most precious gold cloth, and they all got... Sorry. All they got they did away with and worked on the empty looms till late at night. I should very much like to know how they are getting on with the cloth, thought the emperor, but he felt rather uneasy when he remembered that he who was not fit for his office could not see it. So if you're not good at your job, you can't see this cloth, they say. Personally, he was of the opinion that he had nothing to fear, yet he thought it advisable to send somebody any to send somebody else first to see how matters stood. Everybody in the town knew what a remarkable quality the stuff possessed, and were all anxious to see how bad or stupid their neighbors were. I shall send my honest old minister to the weavers, thought the emperor. He can judge best how the stuff looks, for he is intelligent, and nobody understands his office or his job better than he. The old minister went to the room where the swindler sat before, before the empty looms. Heavens preserve us, he thought, and opened his eyes wide. I cannot see anything at all, but he did not say so. Both swindlers requested him to come near and asked him if he did not admire the exquisite pattern and the beautiful colors pointing to the empty looms. The poor old minister tried his very best, but he could see nothing, for there was nothing to be seen. Oh dear, he thought. Can I be so stupid? I should never have thought so, and nobody must know it. Is it possible that I am not fit for my office? No, no, I cannot say that I was unable to see the cloth. Now, have you got nothing to say? said one of the swindlers, while he pretended to be very busy weaving. Oh, it is very pretty, exceedingly beautiful, said the old minister, looking through the gl his glasses. What a beautiful pattern! What brilliant colors! I shall tell the emperor that I like the cloth very much. We are pleased to hear that, said the two weavers, and described to him the colors and explained the curious pattern. The old minister listened attentively that he might relate to the emperor what they said, and so he did. So he told the emperor he saw it, even though he didn't see anything. Now the swindlers asked for more money, silk, and gold cloth, which they required for weaving. They kept everything for themselves, and not a thread came near the loom, but they continued as hitherto to work at the empty looms. So they keep pretending that they're making something. Soon afterward, the emperor set, sent another honest courtier to the weavers to see how they were getting on, and if the cloth was nearly finished. Like the old minister, he looked and looked, but could see nothing, as there was nothing to be seen. 
Is it not a beautiful piece of cloth? asked the two swindlers, showing the ex and explaining the magnificent pattern, which, however, did not exist. I am not stupid, said the man. It is therefore my good appointment, for which I am not fit. It is very strange, but I must not let anyone know it. And he praised the cloth, and which he did not see, and expressed his joy at the beautiful colors and the fine pattern. It is very excellent, he said to the emperor. Everybody in the whole town talked about the precious cloth. At last, the emperor wished to see it himself while it was still on the loom. With a number of courtiers, including the two who had already been there, he went to the two clever swindlers, who now worked as hard as they could, but without using any thread. Is it not magnificent? He said the two old statesmen who had been there before. Your majesty must admire the colors and the pattern. And then they pointed to the empty looms, for they imagined the others could see the cloth. What is this? thought the emperor. I do not see anything at all. That's terrible. Am I stupid? And I Am I unfit to be emperor? That would indeed be the most dreadful thing that could happen to me. Really, he said, turning to the weavers, your cloth has the most gracious approval. So he lied and said he could see it. <laughs> And he nodded contentedly. He looked at the empty loom, for he did not like to say that he saw nothing. All his attendants who were with him looked and looked, and although they could not see anything more than the others, they said, like the emperor, it is very beautiful. And all advised him to wear the new magnificent cloth at a great procession, which was soon to take place. It's a magnificent, beautiful, and excellent one heard them say. Everybody seemed to be delighted, and the emperor appointed the two swindlers imperial court weavers. A whole night previous to the day on which the procession, like a parade, was to take place, the swindlers pretended to work and burned more than 16 candles. People should see that they were busy to finish the emperor's new suit. They pretended to take the cloth from the loom and worked about in the air with big scissors and sewed with needles without thread and said at last, the emperor's new suit is ready now. The emperor and all his barons then came to the hall, and the swindlers held up their arms as if they had something in their hands and said, These are the trousers, this is the coat, and here is the cloak, and so on. They are all as light as a cobweb, and one must feel as if one has on nothing at all upon the body, but that is just the beauty of them. So they're supposedly so nice that you can't tell you have them on. Indeed, said all the courtiers, but they could see nothing, for there was nothing to be seen. Does it please your majesty now to graciously undress, said the swindlers, that we may assist your majesty in putting on the new suit before the large looking glass? The emperor undressed, and the swindlers pretended to put the new suit upon him, one piece after another, and the emperor looked at himself in the glass from every side. How well they look, how well they fit, said all. What a beautiful pattern, what fine colors. That is a magnificent suit of clothes. The master of the ceremonies announced that the bearers of the canopy, which was to be carried in the procession, were ready. So they carry like a big um, umbrella thing over him. I am ready, said the emperor. Does not my suit fit me marvious, marvelously? Marvelously. Good grief. Marvelously. <laughs> then he turned one more once more to the looking glass, that people should think he admired his garments. The chamberlains, who were ready to carry the train, stretched their hands to the ground as if they lift, lifted up a train and pretended to hold something in their hands. They did not like people to know that they could not see anything. The emperor marched in the procession under the beautiful canopy, and all who saw him in the street and out of the windows exclaimed, Indeed, the emperor's new clothes are incomparable. What a long train he has. How well it fits him. Nobody wished to let the others know that they saw nothing, for they would have been unfit for their office or too stupid. Never in an emperor's clothes were so admired. But he has on nothing at all, said the little child at last. Good heavens, listen to the voice of an innocent child, said the father, and one whispered to the other what the child had said. But he has on nothing at all, cried at last all the people. That made a deep impression upon the emperor, for it seemed to him that they were right. But he thought to himself, now I must go to the end. And the chamberlains walked with still greater dignity as if they were carrying the train, which did not exist. So he finished his parade, even though he was naked. <laughs> it's kind of silly. All right. I hope you liked the story.